Last time on Foundation Season 2 Episode 4, Harry is Human and Empire is Under Attack by Magic and Marriage. What do you think about today's episode, Foundation Season 2 Episode 5? Season 2 Episode 5, I give it a 5 out of 10. It's kind of a mid-episode for me. Uh, we didn't get a Bel Rios update, we didn't get a Foundation update, we didn't get an Invictus update. So those storylines are on hold, that's a little frustrating. Uh, there's lots of intrigue though uh, in the palace on Trantor, Queen Sarath and Rue and Day, Dawn and Dusk and Demerzel. What's going on? Lots going on. That's kind of cool. Um, Queen Satter's motivation, is it revenge, power, something else? That's still kind of unclear to me. I guess we'll learn more as time goes on. Uh, Salvor, the storyline for Salvor, Gal and Harry. Harry? Uh, they found these weird Jedi people. Uh, I do want to know more. So that's intriguing. That's good. Uh, but their storyline does feel a little silly at times, like what's going on? It seems all over the place. But as always, great acting, great production values, 5 out of 10 for me. What do you think? I gave the episode a 3. 3 out of 10. It's interesting. It's interesting because there's cool ideas about memory manipulation and also the Klee and One program, but the season arc feels very chaotic. Um, also, there's the stop and stoppiness nature of the the harbor mallow bell reels from the storylines um but just not getting consistent threads so i don't know where their stories are going feels like a very chaotic season um, and then lastly a very cool idea about a colony of telepaths um, but the season feels chaotic because we have a whole colony of people that are that are superhuman and and as given in the story thus far them um, Psychohistory. Psychohistory requires people to be kind of normal, so that way you can predict how they behave on large scales. And so an entire colony of people that are special human powers, I think um, psychohistory is kind of out the window. So overall, 3 out of 10. Let's see what happens. We're already halfway in the season. Um, will these storylines come together? The first thing is just a cool thing. Look at the ship. This is the beggar. And so here's the beggar in space going to a super dense asteroid field. And we notice these little, little sticky outy guys, little guys on the outside of the ship. Um, looks like antennas, maybe distance sensors. Also this little crane guy that pick up cargo. And we were just surprised. We're surprised how just rugged the, the beggar is. Because this is after it crash landed in an ocean planet and then punched its way through in a huge wave. So, uh, yeah, the incredible materials that can survive kind of anything. Yeah, it was underwater for many years. It had a battle damage. Yep. Punched through that wave. Yep. It's had problems, and it actually looks brand new. Brand new. A little shiny. Even the paint's good. Paint looks good. The antenna, it's crazy. The paint that has been exposed to ultraviolet radiation in space. Still good. Still good. Interesting. All right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool program. Uh, let's listen to how... Dealing with numbers means you don't like people. You got them all fooled. They think you care about them. But the truth is, you don't care about anyone. They're all just points on a graph. It's why you're going to fail, because you don't care who lives or dies. So let's say, let's say I have a passion for breast cancer. I want to stop it. I want to be a researcher. I want to be a biologist so I can go make the world a better place, rid the world of brain cancer. Brain cancer? Oh, sure. Or breast cancer. But I'm not allowed to look at a graph because if I look at a graph with my research, that means I'm inhumane and I'm not doing it for the passion of humans. I'm just, there's numbers on a graph. So I have to do my research. Never allowed to use a graph. Never allowed to use paper. Never allowed to use a computer. I want to calculate how much, how much food I need for these school children's lunches. Don't calculate it. You don't care about the kids. Yeah. A spreadsheet with a graph to calculate how many calories. No, no, no. no. What are these Nutrition? points on a graph? What are you doing? They're children. They're people. I mean, I guess. Yeah, they're small. They're small. They're small, small people. If you calculate how much food you need to feed a school, mm -hmm. God, you're like. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> calculate how many people go. Ah, you know, oh, here's Harry. He's feeling the he's pain. Like, he's, he's like, like oh, the numbers. You, oh, the numbers hurt me. <laughs> they called me out. I don't care about people. I care about numbers. I care about numbers. <sighs> Ridiculous. Oh, Rish. Actually, that should have been a clue that Raish wasn't real. Because Raish is here talking about you, you, only, you only care about the numbers. Like, no, Psycho History is about the people and the numbers. That's right. Uh, we have this weird knife here. And we're still, still unclear. We think Harry is, like, real. Like an actual bio-human. Right. He bleeds. He, right? he bleeds. He pokes himself and he bleeds into uh, some water. 
So I guess it could be a robot that bleeds red. Sure, why not? But I think they're implying that it's uh, the story means that it's um, he's an actual person. Sure. Kind of weird, which means he's a clone with memories. Let's listen. My body is as it was the moment before I died. I walked into the cave with Kale. I stood in the darkness, weightless and waiting. And then I awoke beside you, feeling the tug of gravity on my spine. She cloned you. I mean, that feels like a normal human experience of birth, right? Like, he's a human, right? Yeah. 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 So they're saying, he's also saying, like, Harry had all these memories and then he died. And then there's time he didn't remember. Now he's back. And he, on Una's world, he came back to life. So it's the same body reanimated or oh. recreated um, That's with right. memories. Okay. So How did that happen? Principal Harry's body is still in his tomb, I think. Right. What, what did the foundation do with his body? I don't know. Well, in principle, that body is somewhere. So this body is going to like encounter it one day and be like, what the fuck? Maybe I'm not a human. Also well, amazing how just quickly Salver is like your clone. Yeah. He's like, okay, so where did the memories come from? Where did my body come from? Am I, where did this, how did this happen? Memory transfer. Mm. But Salvor has an explanation. She cloned you. Easy. He's like going through an existential crisis. Like, I have all these memories. How did they get in me? <laughs> Salvor's like, Cut. she cloned you, dude. Don't worry about it. <laughs> where did my memories come from? She cloned you, dude. Cut. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, this is the Queen Sarah's uh, talk about some detective work she wants to do. I knew it wouldn't be easy. Calling from Empire's bedchambers are off limits. And then the question of my family? There's nothing, Dominion. I'm sorry. Thank you, Markley. We'll have another request soon. The attempt was in Dave's bedroom. Guess I'll have to work my way in there for a look around. So, uh, I wondered this. So, Sarath here has learned that the attempt, the assassination attempt on Empire took place in Empire's bedroom. She's like, I need to get inside the bedroom to take a look around. Like, are they not going to clean the crime scene? Like, what is she going right. to learn? That's right. It's, it's not like she's a detective in CSI, like, going in right after. It's been a while. <laughs> like, what are you going to find? Right. I mean, it's not like a video game where it's like, let's highlight the four things you have to go press, you have to go click on to get the information you need. I don't think it's going to be like that. It's just going to be a, a bedroom. Although she does go in there. She goes in there and she sees the wall. And she's like, this one damaged spot, I'll go check it out. I mean, it's pretty much like a video game. That's right. <laughs> There's no guarantee they go into the same bedroom. That's right. Empire probably has several bedrooms. I mean, it would be weird if he only had one bedroom. Unless that one room is just like fuck palace. I mean, if I was Empire, would I have one fuck palace? I'd have fuck palaces on every planet in, That's right. the, in the galaxy. That's right. I'd have like a casual one for like summer nights. She's in on a nice breezy with an open window. I have like a winter one so I can see the snow falling as we fuck. I also have like a dungeon one underneath the ground so we can fucking have kinky style. You know, actually, that room that he got assassinated, attempted on in... Was him and Demerzel's room. Oh, was it? Would he want to taint Demerzel's, you know, what? population in, in that room? No, he would go to a different room, Queen Sarath's room, where they get it on. He would have different rooms right. for different people. That's right. If I was day, I would never fuck in my room. Because then I'd have to be like sleeping in those bed sheets. That's dirty. That's gross. I would go fuck in Don's room. Be like, he ain't using it for that. Sure. You're going to go into Don's room. Yeah, he's not. He's not why, gonna why, not have, why not have like a room for Sarah specifically? Oh, that makes sense. And then Demerzel's room. room is the gold room. <laughs> like Demerzel's room is what? The gold room. The gold room. Well, the room that they the room with all the gold around it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sarah's room is like a closet. That's right. Uh, and and it's dirty. Yeah, she doesn't know how to take care yeah. of her room. That's right. She's dirty. Dirty girl. Um, this was weird. Think of me. <laughs> she what? What's with Demerzel? What's going on here? What do you mean? Is she a sexual robot? She seems like a sexy robot. Why did they make a robot with woman parts? That seems unnecessarily complex. I mean, I guess she doesn't have human desire, but she's got the workings downstairs to get it done. Yep. <laughs> yep. She's got a badge. And, and she knows how to play the game. She's like, think of me. And she does the dick symbol. The dick symbol. Yeah. With, with the... A little quirky, yeah. little cute, sm little smirk. I don't a know. A little wink. I love it. 
I mean, I guess it's so that the androids, or the robots, the intelligent robots would fit in with society. Or society would fit in with the robots. Yep. I mean, if you could make a robot with many holes, like, why wouldn't you make it, like, five or six in all sorts of different shapes and dimensions? Why don't make a robot that's entirely whole? It's non-existent. It's perfect. Just virtual robot. Infinite holes, then. Let's watch as Day (laughs) fights with the lady. Let's watch Sarah. You've done this before. Honestly, never quite like this. You're putting on an act. I know you've had a lover. They were killed in the accident that put you on the throne. You have no wish to bed with me. I know why you're here. I was almost killed in this room. Oh, it was this room? I watched you sliding around here, picturing the whole thing, looking for how they failed. You wish they got me, don't you? no kink shaming. Maybe you think that would even some imaginary scale of justice. Maybe you paid for that result. Yes. I'm trying to figure out if it's safe to live here. Have you ever even tried to think about things from my point of view? Do you even know Mm -hmm. what another point of view is? Mm -hmm. I'm turning Trantor upside down. You've been searching for days and you've found nothing yet. You're declining my offer of marriage. Say it now. Now. And sign my own death warrant. Vow to make it safe. This I vow. Then I accept. Now leave. She suspects I killed her family. I had to accuse her of trying to kill me. It got heated. We're engaged. <laughs> yeah, so this uh, whole argument, I mean, felt wild to me. She is, look at this look of disgust. On them teeth. Looking at empire. So this has implications as how powerful dominion is relative to empire. Because... Some podunk pro- provincial planet out there with a queen. They're not going to be able to talk to Empire in this manner and look at him this way and with the tone. Oh, so you're saying, yeah, you're saying, hey, so there's there's two levels of this. You're saying that there's Day and there's Sarath who are, who are arguing. They're just two people arguing. Right? Mm-hmm. But you're actually saying, you're saying that Day also represents the Empire. Mm-hmm. And and Sarah then presents the Dominion. And so mm-hmm. they're also doing this kind of battle between and posturing between the two uh, countries to to uh, empire civilizations right and so you're saying that dominion must be on similar power as empire mm-hmm. otherwise she wouldn't be able to take this bargaining posture she would be much more uh submissive i guess submissive she'd have to be right because she wouldn't be able to you know, push like this mm-hmm. and so the fact that day is also engaging in this argument of uh, posturing it means he knows that his empire is not that strong because I, th- I feel like i feel like old school cleon 13 14 would just be like boom let's put you in that per- that face prison like you don't talk to me like that I- i'm right. an empire and i guess back then empire was so much more powerful than any of the colonies or the mm. pr- provinces that if anybody spoke to him in this manner now he'd just be like shut that down you're done yeah but here they're sort of well, maybe not equal footing but Pretty close. Definitely, so the, definitely Empire stronger than Dominion because Dominion mm-hmm. had to come to Empire to entertain mm-hmm. their request. But Empire is not so strong that he can just bully a Dominion. Dominion right. is able to fight back. And and Empire feels the need to put up with this disrespect and disgust right to his face. Right. Um, which means he can't just get rid of her. Mm-hmm. Which means their relative power in the galactic scale is... More, Closer than Empire would probably want to admit. Mm. So, so cool. So a, a sign uh, that the Empire is having trouble. Agreed. Oh well, yeah. So last episode, Dusk made a play at Rue to do some uh, Pornhub and chill. You know. Yep. And uh, yeah, they're just hanging out, and they did it. Yeah. It was buddy. reruns of their copulation from back in the day. And uh, yeah, they're watching it together. Weirdest date ever, but there you go. That's what you can do if you're Empire. <laughs> or you just have confidence. <laughs> and a, an ability to erase memories. Oh, Jesus. I forgot about that part. Okay, so now we've jumped to it's Gale and Salvor and Harry have landed on this planet. Uh, and Salvor decides, I'm going to go outside and wander around the forest. She finds this literal cloak and dagger dude who's going to kill her. She gets to jump on him. And then it turns out it's Hugo. Like, what? Where did he come from? First of all, I guess guess the first thing is she goes outside of the ship. Which I I like it. I like it because she's the the guardian. What does she call it? The warden. She's the warden. So, like, her whole training, her life has been, like, secure the perimeter. I like it. She goes way far away. She, like, loses sight of the ship. And then she goes out here with a long rifle... Fine, you're gonna mm-hmm. shoot far away. Then she goes in close. Like, what? What, what, are, what are you doing? 
And then she's like, oh, it's Hugo. That's awesome. I like you. I miss you. I need your dick. But then, like, he was walking around with a knife. <laughs> like, like, yeah. If he knew that it was her, what, what, do you do? what are you doing, dude? Just be like, hey, 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 Salvador, I'm here. What's up? Right. He could just be like, hey, I'm here. It's me. It's, you know, no big deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why come up with the cloak and the dagger yeah. and get ready to kill her? Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Like, honey, I miss you. Cool. And then, and then Salvor is so like, I need the D. that she's like, I believe it's Hugo right away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she doesn't question it. She's not skeptical. Mm-hmm. She's like, Hugo, I need it so bad. I, I If there's a 1% chance it's you, I'm going to believe I'll it. Take it. Um, Are you going to give it? Turns out he will not. not. Turns out because it's actually Galron. Yeah, of the Klingon Empire. You see it. You see, see it, it, right? See it. See the crazy eyes. Crazy eyes. See it. Unimpressed. Yeah. Also weird. Also weird. Like, why did this guy disguise himself mm-hmm. as as Hugo? As Hugo. Like, yeah. Why? Why didn't the this is one of the Jedi members in this conclave on this planet uh, that Salvor and Gael heard the calling to go toward? Right. Why not just announce themselves like, hey, you right. heard us. Right. Here we are. They, instead of doing this like ploy where they they fake out Salvor and Harry and Gal, like if you call them to the planet, just be like, I made that lighthouse. Here I'm here. Come, I'm here. come. Yeah, like, yeah, just come. Why do I do this? And then Salvor and Gale and Harry will go check it out. Yep. Whoa. Like you're, you're literally the reason why we came here. Yeah, came looking for you. Now you're gonna hold a knife to me? Mm. What? It was weird. And then they have this power, this this ability to make people unthink. Yeah. yeah. Also weird. Let's watch. Unthink their minds. I mean, this is potentially a ridiculous power. Like, if you were in combat yeah. or in any situation, you'd just be like, sit down. And then they sit sleep. See that pilot of that starship? You sleep. Yeah. You see, starship. Yeah. You could you could do all kinds of problems. So I guess it depends what the range is on this unthinking ability. I mean, it's definitely short range. So even in the short range, like, they could have waited for, for Salver to open up the door and be like, well, the door's open. Everyone has to sleep. In fact, that's probably the right move because if you think there may be some hostile activity, you get the door open, unthink them, lay them down, and then you can talk to them normally in a ratcheted down situation. No need for weapons, no yeah. need for guile. Just go in there and put them to sleep. Yeah. Also, why is it called unthink? Does it like break their brain? Like, are they not thinkable people anymore? So, like, boom, you're a fourth grade education now. Right. Instead of it being like Teleroofy, it's like, we're going to give you stupidity. That's right. You're gonna. You had all this education. We're gonna dial that down to fourth grade education, which means you pass out. No IQ for you. No zero negative IQ for you. Weird. I, mean, I don't even know what that would mean. Risky. This felt risky to me. This is Sarath's corrupt guard going to the data guy. Clavager. Keeper Yartel, Order of Empire. They want some memory audit from the Asclepium. Add the date and time boundaries and the horde number. Give it here. The assassination attempt. He should have these already. You know, I do hope somebody's keeping track of the orders. He's been tearing through everything we have of that day down to third assistant Cook. I'm just doing what they told me. Thank you, Keeper. This felt really weird to me. Like, is there no classification levels? Is there no need to know? Is there no bureaucracy or paperwork to get this data? Is there no tracking of the data? I mean, is it just sort of like I can walk up to the desk and be like, hey, get me the stuff. And he's like, sure. Uh, feels like a huge risk for this guy to go up to this data. He could be found out. Why are you accessing that data? What's going on? You know, that, that could lead back to Queen Sarah. He could get tortured. It felt really odd to me. I guess also a risk for the keeper of the data. That's right. Because he's handing out potentially very important information, kind of willy-nilly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so what does this mean? Does this mean their empire is falling apart? Like the bureaucracy right. Right. and the paperwork and the, the people working together in the IT department is just sort of not cohesive anymore? So mm. random guards can come. I mean, I guess he's not that random. I mean, he's a palace guard, but... I mean, I, I don't know his rank. He could be very high ranking. He could be very low ranking. But either way, they seem both he, the he, the guard and, and he, the keeper seem mm-hmm. to be pretty willy nilly with the rules. And mm-hmm. I would think that in the Cleon of the Cleon 13, 14, the season mm-hmm. one, they these people would be afraid. They'd be afraid that Cleon wanted to be like, nope, kill him. And but instead, they seem to be very free with handing out stuff. 
Right. So, so maybe this is a sign of the rot that the empire is, is going through, that, that people inside the empire are less afraid of the emperor's power. Um, I guess this also lines up with later in the episode where Cleon, the seventh, the, the dusk version, he says that during his reign, he had Demersal handle everything for him. And so maybe these people grew up in a life where empire kind of just sits on his throne. So, so they're not afraid of him anymore. Right. So maybe back in the good old days of the early Cleons, the paperwork and the bureaucracy and the, the rules whole, and regulations, rules and regulations right. were, were held on too tight. And so people just didn't screw around. But now Empire's kind of fallen apart. He's not taking that seriously. So now it's more fly by the seat of your pants when you're getting a critical, which you think important information is just kind of getting handed out. Whatever. Right. Empire's not that important. Now we got security leaks. Security leaks. Yeah, not following procedures. Yeah, I see it. See something, say something. Super important. Super important. Yeah, so uh, like you said, another reason we think Empire is falling apart is the authority to do memory audits seems to be exclusively held by Day, okay? Are you saying only Day has the authority to alter his memories? That's correct. Or yours, or Dawn's. I can't be right. Surely we should hold authority in common. You once did. So my understanding was that the three, dawn, day, and dusk, were sort of three emperors in one, and they were sort of equal footing. I mean, day was more powerful. He would be like the tiebreaker, but generally the three would have to be in agreement. But now it seems like uh, dawn and dusk are completely sidelined, and day is like the dude. Um, so things are falling apart, maybe, for the triple emperor mm -hmm. and it, it's quite it's very important for them to have this three powered balancing mm -hmm. act and because it could be that day actually requested an assassination attempt on himself that he would then defeat because then he would get uh -huh. an opportunity to say like i need to check everyone else you guys are right. iffy and then that's when he did the power grab power grab over day uh, dawn and dusk mm. But if he's actually corrupt, he could take down, he being mm -hmm. Day, he could take down the Empire by doing underhanded sneaky shit. So it's it's mm -hmm. uh, very important that they have this tri-balance. Right, I believe in season one, they would send, you know, then Day, Dawn, or Dusk could be sent out to different places so the Emperor could be in three places at once mm -hmm. with equal authority. Now it seems like if Day isn't there, nobody cares. Right. Because... But, uh, I, I, but the... the the, the responsibility of ruling the empire falls on day. Like at right. the end of the day, at the end of the, at the, end of the day, the day is the one that mm -hmm. does the executions. He's the one that says the proclamations. Right. But there's in the past there was much more balanced power. Right. And they certain day wouldn't certainly have been able to unilaterally, mm. like, alter the memories of dawn and dusk because that would completely undermine their authority. Yep. Wild. And how does Demerzel play into all this? Why is she going along with Jay? She says that her job is to look after the Empire, regardless of any particular um, Cleon. So she's making the calculation that looking after Day is the most important thing over the genetic dynasty? Seems weird to me. Seems like a potential link for exploitation. Is it? Is she just being like Day is is doing me good in the bedroom, and therefore, I'll just do what he says? That can't be right. She's a robot. That can't be right. Maybe it's really good. Maybe it's really good. Hey, you don't know. As long as they're happy, do your thing. I mean, they may be happy, but the Empire may not be. Hmm. Sarah finds out that Demos is a robot, and she seems to be unhappy. Let's watch. That's Demos. Is that a machine? I see machinery. Chantal had machine people, but that was millennia ago. Yeah, so why is this a big deal? That Demerzel is a machine. Um, maybe because Sarath knows she can't compete with Demerzel because Demerzel is a machine. That Dude. booty don't stop. That's right. Oh, that's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, be... she can't actually compete because right. Empire needed to think about Demerzel while she was, you know. Yeah. So I thought I filled in some blanks here. Maybe, maybe intelligent robots are are hated because there was robot wars back in the day. Maybe they're outlawed. I, I think they are outlawed. Yeah. And so this is a big discovery to figure out why she's there. Now, I guess that's kind of weird because if there's ever any photographs or recording of Demerzel, she's been there the entire time. So like mm -hmm. she's immortal, but, but okay. 
So maybe, yeah, maybe it's bad because she's not supposed to exist. All the intelligent robots are supposed to be banned. Mm -hmm. I think the other reason why it's important is because they could, so Sarath could tell the people of Trantor and the entire empire that, that the Cleons are not actually in charge, that it's actually Demerzal behind the scenes making all the decisions, in which case that would erode confidence in the Cleons and could start a, um, an uproar, it could start a um, coup d'etat. At that point, Dominion steps in and takes over Empire. Maybe. Mm. Yeah, so maybe the fact that there's a robot near Empire and has been there all along, yeah. if that got out to the public, the public's belief in Empire's authority would be completely undermined. Um, yeah, we'll see. It seems to be a huge deal. Mm. See how this plays out. Maybe Sarath is going to use this information to get what she wants. Still Which not sure what she wants. Maybe she wants Demerzel. She wants Demerzel for herself. That's got to be it. There it I is. I mean, who wouldn't want Demerzel? All right. Uh, Cleon the First. This maybe AI, maybe sub AI representation of yep. him has a secret. Let's listen. I am aware of my own temperament and their many shades. They are accounted for. What do you mean? This is of no concern to you. So cryptic. We didn't know how to interpret this. Does this mean? I took it, Cleon the first is like, I know my temperaments, and so you don't need to worry about it. Uh, it's all taken into account with the, the three emperors at once, and it, it should be all okay. You guys will work together. Or is it some secret where he's like, don't worry about it. Shh, right. don't look into it. Like, we, And why would there be a secret? Why couldn't the Cleon, the future Cleons know this secret about the temperaments? Right, so... so... I've thought about this like in terms of I thought about this in terms of maybe Cleon is really special. He's a special person because he just had the right personality to be an emperor. And so he made this three Cleon system because he had different personalities throughout three different stages of their lives, just as we all do. And so he has the foresight of being even older than than Dusk and seeing like, well, my youth me versus my midlife versus my evening, my sunset years, like they have different priorities, but I want them all there so that they 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 discuss and they argue things, and then and then the final answer is a good answer. So this could be Cleon the first saying like, "Is you're designed to have conflict? It's okay. Like it's it, within the system. That's why I put three of you there. Don't worry about it. It's not your concern." And but also the way he said it was kind of weird. Kind of weird, right? Felt like it was secret, maybe. Instead of saying like, "Don't worry about it," it's you know you guys are allowed like, to have you're conflict. Good. You're good. He says it's it. not your concern. Like it's. Right. Like, don't look into it further. Let's listen. What do you mean? This is of no concern to you. It's a weird way to say it. So that makes it sound all nefarious and secret. Right. So, But ultimately, this program is a program written by Cleon the First to mm -hmm. tell future hymns what to do. And so maybe he knows his personality, and that's the mm -hmm. way, like, you like, just, just lock it in. Here's an order. Just don't think about it. Okay. Because yeah, yeah. that's what he, yeah. future him, needs to know from past him to guide future him to the good future him. Yeah, okay. He still said it in a weird way, but that could be. He had a weird personality. I guess also the question is, is Cleon the First's AI thing updated mm. with new information? Great question. Or, or is it know. coming from this 400-year-old perspective? Right, because the 400-year-old perspective doesn't know that the new Cleons have genetic drift. In fact, they, they made a point of keeping it secret. Mm -hmm. So so it could be under the under the rules of the Cleons have the correct genes, then don't worry about it. But he doesn't know that they have messed up genes. Or he is getting new information and he knows that, hey, don't worry about it. I don't think that's... I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Let's don't look know. at the next clip. So they do this, this memory audit to see how much memory each person has. And let's watch. 78. My total catafils of memory. What's my number? 29. So Dawn has 29 catafils of memory. Seems like it's a one catafil per, per year. Approximate, is approximately. Approximately. Yeah. Let's look at the rest of the Cleons. 89, 87, 82, 83, another 87. That's reassuring. Looks like I am on course to hit my average. Cleon the first had 213 catafils of memory. Well, he was special. It makes sense he'd have a bigger range of life experience. It does, but that much bigger. So first of all, <laughs> the reason they're doing this is because they're trying to figure out if Day had deleted maybe a, a week's worth of time from mm -hmm. their memories, and so they don't, they do not, they do not have the resolution to see a few days deleted across an entire lifespan. Like there, there are not enough decimals to see like some of missing. I mean, across the whole lifespan, it looked like there was plus or minus five catafils of memory, 
And if it's basically one catafil per year, then a, a week is right. one fiftieth of a catafil. But None you're in this those. variation of plus or minus five anyway. You're, right. Even if you had the decimal places, you're not going to be able to say. Plus or minus five because some Cleons live longer than others. So they mm -hmm. have larger memories. That's fine. Mm -hmm. right? You're just not going to notice if you're going to missing like a, a week or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, so here <laughs> these two emperors like, we know everything. Like we're a data scientist. Like, no, 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 no. Like you, you missed the, how the math works. Well, I wonder the plus or minus five that I was referring to, it's probably primarily due to differences in age. But I wonder what the difference, if two Cleons are the exact, if we had five Cleons of the exact same age, what would be their plus or minus in catafils? Right. So if one stays in the palace all the time, another one's out banging mm -hmm. lots of bitches. So probably looking at plus or minus two. It's still too big of a variance. Yeah. You're not going to notice a day. Not going to notice, notice a, day. Like a day. You're not going to notice a week. Yeah. It's too big in numbers. It's too big in numbers. Yeah. The other question is, um, Cleon the first has 216, two, or 213. Three. Seems like an awful lot, which may mean that the Cleon the first AI thing is getting updates. Ah, so at, at the end of every Cleon's life, they give him like the highlights and put it back into the first Cleon, yeah. the first Cleon's program. So that way that one is holding onto the memories and the experiences of all the other Cleons and that can advise future Cleons. Right. And it has to be highlights. It can't be all of the memories. Right. Because all it would be about 80 times 15, which is big. Right. So if it's highlights, then 80 plus highlights equals about 213. Sure. Mm -hmm. If I was an emperor, you know what I would do? I would create a program that that collects all the memories of my future selves. And it would just be just be the collection of banging a bunch of women. That's right. She'd be like, give me the highlights of your life. Yeah, like the blonde, the brunette. Just, hey, hook it up. Rue. Yep, Rue. Rue. Send it. He already knows about Rue's. So this is actually has no consequences at all. That's right. It's just porn. It's just porn. It's just a horny old man's <laughs> personal porn it's collection. It's just porn. Even in death. Keep updating There's me. more porn memory in Cleon the first than there was actual memory from his life. I'm going to make a genetic replica of my body, except with like awesome abs and chest. And then I'm going to send them out into the universe for all of future time. Send back memories to me. Cleon, what so, a dog. Turns out it's also good counterintelligence because it's throwing them off. That's right. Throwing them off the, you know, the trail to figure out what's actually going on. Turns out it's just porn. Don't worry about it. Good Lord Emperor, guide us with your wisdom. <laughs> actually, he's just a horny boy. Just, yeah. Uh, oh, back, <laughs> changing gears here, back with Gale and Salvor and Harry on the beggar. They're going to crash land because that's how they do. Breaking out, Mo. She said fuck. Okay, well, first off, how did this happen? What, 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 why did, why did this happen? They just, the beggar was in poor shape? Poor, it's, it's simultaneously poor condition and incredible. And incredible. Like, how yeah, why are the circuits frying just from going in the atmosphere? Or was that pilot error where they're like going in too hot? Why are the circuits frying? Yeah, weird. Salva right? can do no wrong. She's fine. <laughs> Negative ionic particles in the atmosphere cause a system reboot. Okay. What? Okay. Electrons. Flying dead stick. Is that bad? Dead, yes. dead stick yeah, sounds terrible. Auxiliary power to the lateral thrusters. Oh my god. Three, this would kill three. you. Oof. Oof. <laughs> okay, so the beggar just takes a beating and keeps on ticking. I mean, it's been underwater, it's gone through waves, it's had battle damage, now it's crash landing. It's still keeping its occupants alive. They're probably just going to do like a quick little repair after this. Oh, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. No problem. Those antennas sticking out the side, not a problem. They're well, still well. there. We'll go pick them up off the, the the forest floor and just stick them in. Good to go. Maybe they're like antennas, but on the end they have like a little bouncy spring, like like the door stops, you know what I'm talking about? Like mm -hmm. boing, boing. <laughs> they just bend whatever they need and they just come back to it. I just come back. Yep. No problem. Yep. Even that crane is like a, it's like Gumby. Mm-hmm. It just, you know, when you need it, it's erect. And when you don't need it, it's soft. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, so they find this uh, conclave. That's Gail, Salvor, and Harry found this, find this conclave of special people who seem to be able to do telepathy across the galaxy. Let's meet them. What brings you to our world? An instinct. It's almost like someone's calling to us. 
Can you hear that? You mean a voice, my voice. You two heard it because you're like her. You have all your senses. We're a refuge and you heard our welcome message. Some people call it mentalics, but I prefer sighted. So mentalics is the word for these special people. We'll call them Jedi. Okay. Uh, they also like to use the word, what do they say, seer? S sighted. Sighted. Yeah, I also like the, the term X-Men. X-Men, yeah. So, okay, that's a good question. So all of these people here, do they all have the same telepathy power? Or do they each have their own individual, like you got fireballs, you got ice, you got Wolverine, like, or is it all the same? I think they have separate because Gale and Salvor have different types of psychic powers. That's right. Salvor, she looks into the past through dreams, and Gale looks into the future by feeling it, and Harry does nothing. Yeah. So it's possible that each one of these people has variants mm. of powers. Sure. I guess they all have some form of telepathy, otherwise none of them would be able to hear. I guess that, but they, they could be receiving, not senders. And who knows, everyone could be a okay. receiver depending on who's the giver. All right, so she is the... The giver? She's the top, and these are all bottoms in this cult. Okay, yeah, sexual, yeah. <laughs> so she's the sender, and they're all receivers. Yes, it could be, it, it could be. And then Salvor and Gail are also receivers. So, yeah, so it's unclear. It could be, there could be time stuff, there could be space stuff, there could be telepathy stuff. Mm -hmm. I wonder if there's gonna be any like telekinesis stuff. Sure. Um, Super healing. Yeah. With via brain power, could be, could be. We shall see. Um, I guess this has implications for psychohistory because I doubt psychohistory took this into account. These special people, right? So Harry's Harry's plan for psychohistory is totally out the window because these people shouldn't exist in his plan. In the books, I think there's a lot, there's a leeway for them to exist, but in small numbers, and this seems like a, a large enough number that they're going to affect the future. But also, Harry chose Gale. Does did Harry know that Gale was? special in some way and so maybe he is has taken into account this conclave there's lots of stuff that harry knows and doesn't share with anyone that's right so some of the stuff he says may just be not maybe lies or twists and turns in his words so that psychohistory can continue to go forward and it's all taken into account mm -hmm. i doubt it but possible he has this um this what is the device called the ex machina where he can do what he needs to make this story plot. Whatever, make it happen. Yeah, his uh, psychohistory. And so this group of people, they're looking for the Prime Radiant. What is it? You mean this? I believe it's called the Prime Radiant. Yes, that's it. They were certainly trying hard not to think about it. I heard Harry tell Gail to hide it. <laughs> First so, of all, these people are super culty. Like yeah. the high up people are talking <laughs> and then they're like whispering to each other and everyone else just waits in the background like waiting for orders. Super weird. Super weird. And then why do they care about the Prime Radiant? I mean, they can talk across space with That's their right. telepathy. Right. So I doubt they want the superposition capability of the Prime Radiants. They're in different locations. They have quantum superposition, which allows them to talk across space. Sounds like they don't need that. So they need the information contents of the Prime know. Radiant. So does is the information like, a, oh, sorry, is the Prime Radiant a, like a library where it holds a bunch of information or is it like a supercomputer where you just jam it with whatever you want and send it off of calculating? I don't know. I think it's, I mean, it's implied, I think, that it's primarily a calculation device for psychohistory, which means it's got to store something about psychohistory, and okay. then mostly calculations, but it also stores Harry's AI. Ah, so they want to, they want the Prime Radiant because then it can, they can mess with prime, with Harry's Prime Radiant AI, and then also they can take psychohistory and throw it off course. Oh, so they want to throw psychohistory off course. Oh. Yeah, at the very end, they say, like, at the very end, they say there will not be a second foundation. So they seem to not want it. So why wouldn't they want a second foundation? This Maybe they want to be on top? I, would, I mean, who doesn't? Who doesn't want to be on top? So they, they think they're going to be on top, so they don't want a found. Well, they don't or want a maybe, second foundation. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so, so maybe... No, I don't have a thought. <laughs> maybe, maybe they want to be the second foundation, guiding the foundation and empire to a new golden age. Could be. Maybe one of their people is able to see the future. They have like premonitions, okay. and they saw a second foundation caught and lots of problems in the in the galaxy. So when they told her the head boss, they told the story, and then she's so her thought is okay. Well, let's stop a second foundation from happening because if there's no second foundation, we can't go down that future path. So she's like, we're going to stop the second foundation. Maybe that's why. 
And so I wonder if they have some understanding of what psychohistory is, how is how it's calculated. Because then they can sort of make predictions. Like if I get rid of the second foundation, then we'll go down a good path, which means mm-hmm. they're good people, but they seem nefarious. That's right. Well, everyone seems nefarious until you learn about them. Friendship. That's, is that true? Actually, not true. Some people just seem good-hearted. That's right. And then they turn out to be evil. Oh, that's real. That's oh, real. God. Uh, I suspect uh, next time in, in season two, episode six, we'll get some maybe new characters. Maybe new, uh, new kind of character, character overload here. My God. Yeah. We got this new conclave to worry about. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Bell he's, Reels, he's off in space doing something. We have no idea what he yeah. is. Hober, Mallow, Verisoff, and Constant are mid-trip right now doing on the way to the something. inner planets in Trantor. What are they? We haven't gotten an update. Mm-hmm. What is Queen Sareth really up to? Maybe she hired these assassins. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe Day hired her. I don't know. Oh my gosh! Very this confusing. So twisty, turny. And will the Jedi? What will they do? Will they have a key role in going forward? Will there be an order to stop them? Maybe Harry thinks. Maybe Harry knows that the Jedi will actually be the second foundation mm. unwillingly. Mm. Yeah. So there's a lot of characters and a lot of loose ends to tie up here. So we'll see how this is going forward. See you next time for season two, episode six.